Welcome back. Now that we learned how to program our bot to do some basic movements, like move forward, backwards, left and right, we're going to focus on programming our bot to use the touch sensors and the ultrasonic sensors to help avoid obstacles. So the first thing we need to do is we need to name the program. So I'm going to come right over here and I'm going to rename it. Since we're going to do each thing separately, I'm going to show you how to use the touch sensors first in a program and then we'll use the ultrasonic sensor separately in a different project. Could you combine them? Absolutely. For this particular lesson, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep them separate so you can learn each one separately. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this program a name and since we're learning the touch sensor first, I'm going to call this touch sensor. And then I'm going to save the project as well and I'm going to call it obstacles. Now once everything's saved, you're pretty much ready to begin, but make sure your brick is, your EV3 brick is connected to your computer. Um, you can see mine is. I connected it via the Bluetooth. I'm connected and ready to go. Now if you want to see what ports are being used, don't forget you can go in here to port views and you can see my two motors, B and C, are connected, but I now have two sensors connected, two touch sensors in port one and port two. And I'm going to show you my bot so you can see how it is set up um, for this particular project. For the touch sensor project, I'm using two touch sensors. One is in the front, as you can see, and I made it come out slightly further than the wheels so it could detect the obstacle first and not get the wheels hit up onto the obstacle. You can see that I'm using port 2 for this particular front uh, touch sensor. And then I have one on the side, which I did, that is going, on, going upward. This is going to be used to turn the bot on instead of having to use the um, EV3 brick. And this particular sensor is, um, the cable is plugged into port 1. Now, you can build your sensors any which way you'd want, as long as you have one that's going outward and forward and one that's going upward. You can use any one of the four ports that you feel comfortable with. Just remember what port you're using, so when you program, you use the right port. Okay, so let's get back to programming. Okay, now that your touch sensors are attached, we want to move on to the programming part. The first thing we want to do is we want to get the bot to run when we press the upwards touch sensor. So instead of using the EV3 brick, we want to use the upright touch sensor. So the first thing we need to do is go down here to your tabs and choose the flow control tab and bring out a weight tab and attach it. So in order to do this, we need to pull this down we need to choose touch sensor. We want to compare the state. And now we have three choices. So we have zero, which is released. So basically what we're telling it is, wait until the touch sensor is released for the program to run. Meaning that you would hold it down first and then release it. Or we would be saying, wait until the touch sensor is pressed, then run the program or wait until the touch sensor is bumped and then we'll run the program. So we want to choose pressed. So again, the program will not actually start until we press the upright, upward touch sensor. So let's add a movement tab next. So go to action, the action tab and do move steering. Let's keep it set to rotations and have it go straight with the speed of 50 for two rotations. So this is all we're going to put in there just to test it. What we want to test and see if what happens is when we press the upright sensor down, the upright touch sensor, will it move forward for two rotations? Well, let's download the program and 
and download and run it after and see if it works. So we downloaded our program into the EV3 brick and the green blinking light is showing that the program is running. The reason why the bot is going nowhere is because we have it programmed to start with um, a wait till you press the touch sensor button and then it will go to rotation straight. So let's test it and see if it did this. Perfect. You can see that it did exactly like we programmed it. So now that we got to see that the upright touch sensor could be used to start our bot, we're going to work with adding to this program using the front sensor and how we can get it to stop when it bumps into a wall and then moves back to rotations. So in order to do this, the first thing we need to do is change the move steering that's already in here to be on, just on indefinitely, that it just keeps running and running and running. So right now, the way we have it is if I press the upright sensor to start, it would con the bot would continue going straight and hit into a wall and continue rotating at wheels, the wheels. It would not stop until we manually stopped it. So what we want to tell the, uh, the bot is that when it now is bumped into a wall that our front touch sensor bumps into the wall, we want it to stop and then back up to rotation. So in order to do that, we now need to change this to go indefinitely and bring in a, another weight block, which is found in the flow control area and do the same thing we did to the first one, almost the same thing. We want to go down to touch sensor, compare, and hit state. But this time, instead of keeping it at pressed, we want it to be changed to bump. So when it bumps into a wall, it will do the following. Could you use press? For this, you could use press too, because um, when the bot's going forward, it will press into the touch sensor. But for this one, we're going to use bumped. Either one would work. And I need to change the port because we are not working with port one. Port one is our upright touch sensor. Port two is our forward sensor. Make sure you change your ports if you need to. So the next step that we want to do is we want to add two action buttons, action tabs, two move steerings. So we want to add one move steering to tell it to stop when it is bumped into the wall. So we're going to just say off. And now we're going to add one more move steering after it. It's going to stop and then it's going to back up to rotation. So this is already set to rotations. We want it to go backwards so I'm going to make this negative 50. You can see my arrow now went down and I'm going to change this to two rotations. So again, let's look at this really quick, this program. So the program we have is a weight tab, a weight block right here. And the weight block is telling us that when the touch center the t sensor, the upright touch sensor is pressed, it will move forward indefinitely. But if it hits an object such as a wall, if it bumps into it, it's going to stop and then it's going to move backwards to rotations. So let's see if this actually works. Let's hit download and run and test it. So let's test that our bot will run the program we just completed. We are telling it when we press the upright sensor over here that it will drive forward indefinitely until it hits into the wall over here and it's bumped and then it will stop and back up to rotations. So let's test it. Great, it did what we wanted it to do. So I hope this short tutorial was helpful in how you can program touch sensors 
for your bot, I would encourage you to experiment with different ways to use your touch sensors and to either enhance the program I already created or to create a new project.